Shoot. All right, well, let's see what we got going on here, because by the looks of it, it's not a lot. Main cam, let's load this thing up. Uh, let's crack out voice meter banana in case I got a cough. Nobody wants to hear that junk. And uh, then we'll put mic to mouth. So this is just going to be a short little deal on how to create which this table looks like it's been redone, how I create and bring my minis into Tabletop Simulator um, with the clear bases. Uh, this is the, the minis that I, that I use. This one's a, a two-sided mini, and this one is a mirrored mini, which is basically one side. It just mirrors the back. There's two different ways of doing it. Um, step one. Use any one of the blank templates below to create your image. I recommend using GIMP or Photoshop for this. Save the image as a PNG, uh, PNG to preserve any transparency. Uh, here's the files. Um, so you've got the mirrored and the two-sided. I recommend the two-sided uh, because what I like to, to use is front and back images. Once you've created your images, upload it to the internet and I recommend using um, the in-game upload feature. I haven't really messed around with the new in-game upload feature. Uh, using method A or method B to create your model. So method A says clone an existing model or method B create a new model from scratch. All right, so this is just, this is called Rokem's. Uh, let's go to Games Workshop and see. R-O-K-E-M. Rokem, Rokem's 2D figurines for RPGs. D&D &D Pathfinder, basically they work for anything. And you could script them, which is actually pretty cool. I've done a, a little bit of work with that. So let's shoot over to my work table. Uh, let's load my work table up. And then under objects, if I go to my saved objects and I put in my minis, I have a plain mini. I have a Savage Worlds mini. And I also use one other one. I don't know if I'll find them in this bag or not. I'm, no, I think I might have fixed this bag. Yeah, there's nothing on it. Uh, let's try my ICRPG stuff. Two-sided figure. And then this one, this one is the one that I have with the script. That's, oh, this, this one's scripted as well. Savage Worlds. These are mainly the games I play. I don't play a lot of D&D, but I don't recommend doing this. I, I put a lot of time and effort into this, and I find that they're, they're, the minis, if you're going to import them into the game and you're going to um, statically set them to a system, they become less usable. Um, what I mean by that is under my saved objects, under my miniatures folder, and under my paper forge, I have a goblin warrior. This base is clear. This goblin warrior has nothing on the bottom. I could right click and hit custom and take this image, control C, and paste it over top of this, control V, and now I have an ICRPG mini. Basically, this thing would have, um, you know, 10 hit points kind of a thing. One heart, 10 hit points. And I could keep track of each individual goblin had I a bunch of them on the table. Right? Maybe this guy, he's down, he's down five by one. This guy's down by a couple. Um, this guy's down to two or three. And, and I can keep track of them as I go, as I go around. <clears throat> That's kind of a cool feature. Uh, very simple, very straightforward. The problem is, in a game like Savage Worlds, if we go right-click and we go Custom, and I Control v this one onto here, you are going to see that you can still do things like change the name to Goblin Warrior. Uh, Warrior, uh, you can put in its parry. Let's say it has a parry of um, 5 and a toughness of 4. Now, there is nothing that signifies that this is parry or that this is toughness because this is not the image that I would normally put over it. This normally says shaken on the back and there's a bit of farting around. So like I said, here's the problem. If I wanted to play a game of Savage Worlds and I have this mini done in, in one form, 
uh, say on this on the Savage Worlds base to get it to go over to um, an ICRPG pace, not not really that hard, but you end up doing it over and over again as opposed to just leaving the minis the way they are. This thing is good for any game I play: Savage Worlds, Pathfinder, uh, Genesis. Yeah, I actually said Genesis. Not that I would play it, but or run it, but you know what I mean. It's it's generic, which I'm finding uh, the more I play it. Um, you know, the more I play with Tabletop Simulator, the better it is. It's kind of one of the faults when you look at things like Roll20 or you look at things like uh, Fantasy Grounds. When you build an adventure inside of Fantasy Grounds, you build it system-specific. So that adventure can't be pulled out of Savage Worlds and put into ICRPG, Dungeons & Dragons. That's not a true statement. You can. But what I mean by that is that you can it requires a lot of work whereas this goblin is system generic i would have to build this goblin for savage worlds or i'd have to build it for icrpg or dungeons and dragons inside of fantasy grounds generic seems to be the way to go so here you have another model that i've done you get the gist right cool looking dudester this is uh hankerin's work and um i even made it so that you can see through the the little um, spell that he's casting. You set him up close, you can look right through it and you can see the goblin because it's all transparent. Okay, so that is that is my suggestion, my take it or leave it. Generic bases, uh, if I want to play Savage Worlds, I don't need extra minis. Um, you know, I don't need Savage Worlds specific goblins. I don't need ICRPG specific goblins or any scripts for anything other than that. So let's get rid of this stuff off the table because we don't need to see it. Scoot over to the right monitor. Paper Forge Mini, one of the best bangs for your buck. Four bucks, not even actually, I should say, I should let me rephrase that. Two dollars per month gets you access to all the color variations that I'm gonna show you, including, um, or for each mini, included as uh, PNGs or PDFs, printable documents. I am, part of the titanium group because I have a cut machine that I can actually use these multi-purpose. This is why this is fantastic. Not only does four bucks get me a paper mini of this with a cut file that I can easily print out, but I can also use them in my games like for Tabletop Simulator. Paper Forge is probably not the most popular one. Yeah, he's doing all right. He's making 15, 1600 bucks a month, but uh, I am also among other ones. You can see the people that I support. Runehammer is top-notch. Um, Kaora does wicked maps. Dice Grimorium gives you the PSD file for maps, which for, for me making maps in Tabletop Simulator is fantastic. That's not what this video is about. I don't know why I'm getting off topic here. Uh, but the other big one, same deal. Four bucks a month, printable heroes. This guy's massive. L this guy's making 12 grand a month. 4,500 people download this guy's stuff, man. And this is crazy. The artwork is fantastic. He does wicked things. These are the latest and the greatest of Lemurs. Uh, what is this guy? A half elf demon slayer that's pretty cool. Uh, front and back art, wicked. Multi purpose for me because I can print them out and use them as awesome paper minis, or I can use them inside of Tabletop Simulator. So this is how I do it. Uh, I'm going to show you how I get this done today. Once I download the files, uh, let me go to my D drive. Uh, my D drive has paper miniatures folder, and these are different paper miniatures that I've bought in over time. And right now I'm currently working on my Paper Forge minis. And so, um, start to finish, I should say. Let's crack this open. Let's go to home. On Patreon, we go to Paper Forge Minis. Uh, from Paper Forge Minis, I'm going to download as soon as my internet picks up and does its deal. Molten Ooze. So I would download the Titanium Cut file or the Copper Tier 1 zip file. I would unzip them, <clears throat> excuse me, and I would put them into this folder. So you can see that um, these are nicely organized by the number, which is very cool. 
and I am currently working on, let's put that back up there and go to, where's my GIMP? I was doing the red cap. Uh, we don't need to keep these open. I'm just going to show you how simple this is to do. So the red cap is 105. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bust out my Paper Forge minis and I'm gonna go to uh, Tavern Maiden. So there, here's the PDF for it. Let's bust out the PDF and see what happens here. There we go. Oh, come on, full size. So this is what you would get on a PDF image kind of a deal, which is pretty sweet. There's some borders, bases, front and back, table standee style, cut them out, very simple. Um, PNGs, however, come in a variety of flavors. So there she is, um, I guess, white-skinned, red-haired, brown-skinned, dark-haired, blonde, purple dress, black hair, right? You have a variety of maidens if you need multiples, even though they look the same, the color's different. This one is labeled Tavern Maiden 1. So I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm going to hit Open This with GIMP. And then at the bottom, here she is in GIMP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to take my eraser, which for me is Shift-E. I'm going to zoom in up here, and I'm just going to delete this and this, because I need there to be a separation in pixels between the outside and the inside. Zoom down here, put a little chop line there, and a little chop line right there. There we go. Now, you're going to take your fuzzy select tool, which for me is U, crank the threshold all the way up to 255. That's going to select all of the colors. And then you just click on her, Control X, turn off the this this comes with Rokum, this little design. In fact, in multiple places, I have blank templates of this already done. Uh, you can choose base tops if you want to put in like uh, Aztec floor. I don't know why there's nothing there. Gold coins. What is this? Dirt brown. So you you can put in you know the appropriate, but I recommend not doing this. And the reason is is because then you've got you're you're starting to get thousands of of you know different bases one miniature on different bases if you leave these clear you know, i don't you don't even have to put in the murder hobo show that's just what it's going to show when it flips upside down so we'll shrink down if you leave this clear and the background clear and this side strip this side strip is actually the base of the miniature um, so everything gets left transparent now we're going to control v over here, we're going to call her 106 uh, Tavern Maiden, and she's Tavern Maiden 1 because she's the first one that I took. Now, to fit her to scale, the width can be no more than 490 and the height can be no more than 690. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change the height because I can just tell, I've done this so many times, to 690, which puts the width below. So if I hit Cancel and hit shift T uh, were I to change the width to 490 the scale would be too high it can't be higher than 690 so that's how you know it's not going to work this one of these two numbers is too big so we're going to change this to 690 puts the scale at 404 so we scale that M and we're just going to put her sort of in the center just eyeballing it, and then I'm going to zoom in and say, okay, right over this figurine U is where I dropped her. So we go over here, fuzzy select tool, select all of her. The reason I put the brakes in is because if these were connected, it would connect all of the outline, and I don't want it. That's why I erased the stuff here and here so that you're just getting the image. Once she's highlighted, control X, back over to the to this side, control V. And I'm just going to call this one number two. Uh, for me, it's shift T, but I want to scale just this layer. And I'm going to change her height to 690. I'm going to hit scale. And then under layer, not the image, under layer, you want to transform and you want to flip. Now, when you look at her, you can't tell that there's two images there because they should be almost exactly the same, except this is the back. So if I hit move and remember that I put the corner just on the one side of the U, I'm just going to drag her over here. And then down when I get to the bottom, I'm going to move her something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. You won't notice it in game. Now I have a mini with a front and a back. Right click over here 
and merge down. And this becomes 106 Tavern Maiden 1. From there, you're going to export this. Um, I have <clears throat> over 105 uh, separately saved miniatures. So I'm going to call this 106. And this is going to be Bar Maiden. And I'm going to call it Bar Maiden 1 because... And we're going to hit export and save it as a PNG. We're calling it Bar Maiden 1 because it is, ta or sorry, Tavern Maiden is what I should rename it. That's okay. I could just scooch this over like so. Here's all the ones that I've already done. And then down here, F2. Oops. I don't know why that did that. F2. Just rename her. Uh, tavern I'm kind of half looking over my microphone here Tavern Maiden 1 cool she's done 106 Tavern Maiden 1 so if I move this back out of the way that's why I called her Tavern Maiden 1 because the, here's here's 2 here's 3 here's 4 if I ever want to add more then I can just name them all Tavern Maiden whatever 106 Tavern Maiden 2 it's just me being OCD with my organization okay so that's essentially it. You you can get this image, this this Rokum's image, and you can import it into Tabletop Simulator. Um, I'll put up a link to my blank template of this inside the video so that you can just access this template and then just use GIMP and the artwork is done. It's just a matter of scaling it. It's either going to be 490 across or 690 top to bottom. So if you want to take a look at this red cap, this red cap, for example, is a lot wider than it is tall. So if I hit Shift T, you can see that the width says 988, but it's literally because it's two combined images. So if you half it, you're looking at, oh, geez, 460 something, 464 kind of a thing right in there. And then what it does is, is the image lines up just like a pixel or two on the inside and a pixel or two on the outside and on the bottom. And that's all there is to it. Now, from here, how do I get them in game? What I do to get these things in game is I use Imgur. Got my little freaking Imgur thing here. And under Imgur, I have my Paper Forge Minis. I will scroll all the way down to the end, which is this harpy. So from the harpy, <clears throat> excuse me, and my Paper Forge Mini, I now need to select not this one, but this one and all the others all the way down. So I'm just going to select these images. Uh, let's just do one. Let's select this harpy image. Gets uploaded. And then there it is. There's one harpy. There's the other. With this image uploaded to Imgur, make your account, create your folder, you know, do whatever it is. Um, these are all the folders that I have for all my safe stuff. Some of the maps that I create, like Battle Arena, has 18 different pieces, so I keep it in there. The Waterfalls map that were done by different people, I or usually organize them by, um, like, the map that I've done. Um... And then, yeah, so now I've got my Paper Forge minis. Go, go down to the end. And on here, you just right click and hit copy image address. And that's all there is to it. So we're going to go back over to our tabletop simulator. Uh, we are going to go to, let's see if I go to games, workshop, and hit ROK. Here's a little trick. You can hit these three buttons here, these options. They're not there. These three little buttons, you can click on this and you can go expand. And when you do that, you don't actually import any of this stuff. So we're going to use the two-sided figurine. So we're going to drop that figurine. That figurine is very tiny. We want to make him a whole lot bigger for purposes of this video demonstration. Let's make a massive. Okay. Two-sided figurine. It's purple on one side, blue on the other. Green base, orange stripe around the bottom. 
when you're looking at let's go back to right monitor and you're looking at your gimp when you originally get this artwork there will be a purple side a blue side and green and uh green striped on the top and what is on the bottom here let me flip this thing over yellow striped i'll show you so this will be green striped uh, the Murder Hobo Show part where I put my emblem will be yellow striped. And then this base will be red and white striped. Back to TTS. I'll show you what I mean. Blue side. <clears throat> Here's the blue image. It's one side. There's the pink image. Green on the top. Green stripes. Now this side piece is right here. At the base of the mini kind of a thing is sort of like a red and orange. And then when you take the thing and you flip it over, there's your yellow. So these, all these sides will be sort of displayed in the image. I should actually see if I can't find that image. This is what I should do. Games, let's go back to uh, Rokum. It's actually, let's, we can just go load his table up. <clears throat> load load his table okay so where are two-sided templates uh, right here uh, control c hopefully this works i want to copy that and i want to go control v uh, control uh, maybe that didn't work. Uh, right click. All right, you stinking thing. How do I get that uh, information out of there? Control. Copy. Come on, sucker. Uh, nope. Well, that would suck if you really had to type this in. Just saying. Oh, you don't. This is okay. So here's what you do. See, it's a good thing I'm here to figure this out. Increase the size of this bad boy, right? And then what you do is you just right click and go to custom. And then where it says diffuse image, you take this control C. That's how you can get it out without farting around with it too much. That should probably be put in the notes there. Now, if I go over to the right monitor, you're going to see that here it is right here. So you can right click on this and you can hit save image as, and we're going to save it as this layout under my downloads folder. And then we're going to go to my downloads folder. And we are going to go to here, right click open with GIMP. All right, if, if by the end of this video, you don't know how to do this, I, I don't know what to tell you. Here you go. Here's the problem with this, the way that it's set up right now. This, this is the layout that you want. So when you export this to a PNG file, this is sort of the gist of how your thing should look. But you need to select some of this stuff and get rid of it, which is why my template will work wonders for you. So we'll select all of this. We're going to hit delete. We're going to zoom in over here. We're going to change the threshold down to like next to nothing. Maybe we'll put it at 10. Maybe we'll go even higher. Let's say we put it at 70 or 80. Okay, so there's that one, that one, that one, and that should get rid of basically all of the stuff on the one side. But you can see that it really doesn't still leaves this one line so we're going to delete that too control z change the threshold down a whole bunch and just delete that as well now that we've got that done you could fart around uh, change the threshold back up and make the circles to the exact sort of specifications uh, let's see if we can't go a little higher or actually, you know, here's an easy way to do it. If you take the threshold and you put the threshold down to say like 10 and you select the black part and then hit uh, or go to image or select and then hit invert, which is control I, um, 
go to your eraser. Where's my eraser? I use shift E, change the size of the brush, and then this, and then just delete this so that all you're left with is the sort of template. Make sure you don't delete top of base. You gotta be careful with this. That one. And there's that one. Like so and so. And then you're left with this control shift A. So this is what your generic base looks like. This is how you get it. From here, <clears throat> it is a matter of control Z. Let's bring her back, right? So this is what the image looks like. Same deal. Take this, cut her off there, cut her off there. So she's separated. Little chisel there, little chisel there. And that leaves you with the two images. So you're going to take your fuzzy select, select her, oh, threshold all the way up. Control X over to this one, control V, call it whatever you want. She is tavern maiden, kind of doing this twice. Shift T, change the height of her to 690. So she's as tall as she can be. And then just move her into the picture, just like you did before. See now, and you just sort of repeat the process. What I've done is I've gone and created a bunch of different layers. Um, if we expand this one, no, let's do base tops. You see all the, you know, if I wanted to put grass, uh, moon rock, rock stained blood, etc., etc. You get the gist of it, right? This should all be coming together. So, uh, back here, two here, two my paper forge minis. Um, no. That's not what we want to do. We want to go to, do I have my, okay. So we want to go here. We want to go to Imgur. From Imgur, we want to go to where I uploaded the files. We're going to shoot down to the end and we're going to take this harpy, which is going to be copy image address. We go back into tabletop simulator, uh, where from <clears throat> Rokum's table, you will be using the two-sided mirror. You can take this thing, uh, this two-sided image, right-click, custom, and under image, control V, and you're going to paste in the image that you've got saved from the other place. Now, you can also save these images to options, modding to the cloud. I haven't used the cloud in so long because it sucked for so bad, but they've changed the cloud manager. And you can save things here. I still haven't farted around with this enough. I like to save everything to Imgur. Everything's in one spot. All right, so let's go back here for a second and go to um, workshop, Rokum, right click, load. From here, um, if you hit F8, or we'll just use this tool, this gizmo, and hit move and click on the two-sided figurine, you can see that it's set to scale one. I'm just going to set it to scale two across the board. Two-sided figurine, right click, and uh, save object. And then when you save the object, just save it into your root folder under two-sided figurine so that you can always find it which is what I will do. You'll be able to find it under objects, saved objects, and it should be right there, two-sided figurine. So now, depending on, or no matter where you go, we'll load up my work table. Here is my work table. Uh, here is your two-sided figurine. And then it's just a matter of taking this blank one, and as many times as you need to make different, whatchamacallits, different models. Control V, uh, imports, well, this is the art from my saved workshop. This is a printable heroes mod with the invisible base. Right click on the harpy, copy image address, custom, and it's just paste the image. Paste the image with nothing, nothing in the bases. Uh, turn off that so that this is transparent and this is relatively transparent. 
and the sidebar is transparent. And then when you pump it into uh, Tabletop Simulator, you will get not the front, you won't get any of the space. And that's how you make clear bases. Clear bases and clear monsters are a way to do it. And you can take any art you want and just put it into uh, into that deal. And that's how I make my paper minis. All right, that's it. Well, peace out.